Okay, guys. So let us continue with where we left in the previous lecture. So if you remember in the previous lecture, we modeled this particular fluid domain around the, the MS body and uh, we successfully created a small extrusion around the uh, geometry like an inner domain and uh, we called it as uh, the body of influence, right? So this is where we stopped in the previous lecture. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a nice mesh around this body, which is going to be unstructured in nature. And uh, to do that, uh, if you come back to the project schematic, you can see that there is a nice tick close to the geometry, which means geometry is uh, ready. There's no problem in this. And now there is an update uh, symbol close to mesh, which means that it is waiting for you to give the mesh properties. Okay. So just double click on mesh and at the bottom, you can see a message which says starting meshing. So let's wait for a couple of seconds to, uh, for the meshing window to open up. Okay. So now if you see here, the geometry is pretty much ready and um, you can see the, uh, the geometry has been successfully imported into the mesh. And now what we need to do is that uh, we need to uh, create a mesh around the geometry that has been imported. Okay. So now let us go through each of uh, the global and the local size settings that we can define within ANSYS uh, mesh so that we can create uh, uh, a good enough mesh around this geometry. Okay. So let's get started. So as soon as the geometry has been imported, if you hit generate mesh here, a very coarse mesh, uh, a very rough mesh would be generated around the domain. Okay. So if you see this, this kind of a mesh is of no use. Okay. So we cannot create a mesh which is this coarse, but uh, we need to do a series of treatments to this kind of a uh, mesh so that uh, we have a very well discretized domain where the fluid flow will be very accurate okay so to do that what you need to do is that you need to make sure that the physics preference is in cfd and uh, because i'm using 19.2 i can only give the uh, element size okay so you can even follow that so what i'm going to do is that um, i'm going to units and first change the units to millimeters and it says that uh, the default size is about 180 millimeters okay so that is quite intuitive because if this is going to be about, uh, I think I'm, I gave it about uh, half a meter and uh, I can see that there are about one, two and three cells here. So it is about 180 into three, which is just about 500 mm, right? So I can see that this element length is pretty much uh, high, it is too high. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the element size to 30 millimeters. And uh, you can also go to sizings and in maximum size that you can see here, you can say 30 and uh, you can right click on mesh, go to insert and say method and um, just press control A on your keyboard to select the two bodies that you can see here and in method, you change it to tetrahedrons. Uh, so what we have done is that uh, we are just saying that it needs to be a unstructured tetrahedral mesh around all the bodies that we can see here. And uh, make sure that the algorithm is patch conforming because we have another option which is patch independent, but this will increase the cell size uh, to a very large number. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on generate mesh. Now you can see that it's going to take slightly longer than what it took last time around. And uh, this is also going to make our mesh a lot, lot finer okay, than what it was looking earlier. Um, so if you remember earlier on, we just had uh, three elements in this gap, but now we have about, we have about uh, 10 to 12 elements in this gap, which is actually a good number, right? So this is how you can give uh, the first sizing, which is the global sizing. So anything that you give here is called as global sizing. You can even increase the quality. If you go to quality and uh, increase the smoothing levels to high, then the mesh will look a lot more finer, okay? So all the sizings that you give within uh, this environment under the tree is actually called as the global sizing. So if you see the uh, number of elements under statistics, the number of elements is about uh, 367,000 elements. Okay. So it is still coarse and uh, I think we can uh, extend our limit up to uh, one and a half or two million uh, cells. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to define the cell size within this body of influence that we have created. Remember, we had first created the body of influence with the motive of uh, making the elements a lot finer within that uh, particular region, right? So that was the reason why we made the body of influence. And now that is exactly what we're going to do. 
we are going to define a sizing of about 10 millimeters within this body of influence which is about one third the size of uh, um, the element outside the body okay so anywhere in the body it is about 30 millimeters but when it comes to body of sizing body of influence we are giving it a size of 10 millimeters let's see how to do that now so if you go to right click here if you go to insert and uh, give sizing first it will ask you for the uh, which body it is okay so where you want to give the sizing so here is the um, selection filters and make sure that you select the body selection filter here and select the outer body and click apply and then under the type instead of element size change it to body of influence and now it will ask you which is the body of influence so uh, you can select the body from here this is the body right so what you can do is you can just select here you can just click on this outer domain or this inner domain as you can see here and select this one so you have defined this as the body of influence and now the element size you are saying it's going to be 10 millimeters okay and now hit generate so now if you can see um it is gen it is generating a mesh around the body of influence which is the inner body as well as the outer body and uh, the meshing has been done and if I go to mesh you can see that this region which is just around the car has a much smaller element okay so the difference in sizing can be seen if you just zoom it out so here you have pretty large elements and as you can see here there's a smooth transition to smaller elements okay so that is what body of influence basically does all right so as soon as you define it as a body of influence what happens is that the contact region has a question mark here so now it knows that now if you can see here that body of influence is actually not there right it is uh, it has it has actually vanished so the reason why it has actually vanished is because um, the moment you define this is what i was telling you in the previous lecture when you define it as a body of influence and this automatically knows that you have just created it to give a differential sizing and that it is not a physical body by itself that's the reason why ANSYS has automatically merged it with the existing body and that's the reason why you are having a question mark here so what you can do is you can select the contact region and hit delete we don't need it anymore okay so when you do that uh, and then what you can actually do is that um, you can right click on the solid here and hide that body so you don't have any discrepancy now okay so it looks all good and now what we're going to do is that uh, we are going to create a face sizing around the uh, car body the reason why we are doing that is because we want to have a very small very small elements on the faces of these um, um, surfaces of the car body because that will give us enough number of nodes to create the inflation layer which will capture the boundary layer with higher uh, levels of accuracy okay so to do that right click here on mesh and go to insert sizing and uh, last time around we selected the body selection filter but this time we are selecting the face selection filter the reason is because we are giving a face size so what we are going to do now is that you need to go to this drop down arrow here and select box select and just draw a box around the car so what this will do is that it will select all the faces uh, within that box and uh, in essence it will select the entire car domain and click apply and in the element size if you remember the global setting was about 30 mm in the body of influence it was 10 mm and now in the face we are going to say it is much smaller which is about 5 millimeters in size so if you hit generate now you can see what happens it is now uh, meshing the faces as well so the face meshing has also been done and now solid meshing is being done which is the body mesh and uh, the meshing is complete and if you see here let me just zoom out so that you can see three different levels of uh, refinement see this here it is much bigger in size this is my slightly smaller and here it is much darker which means if i just zoom in here you'll be able to see it you just keep it like this okay so that you can see three different sizes this is about 30 mm this one is about uh, uh, 10 mm and if you can just zoom in here this uh, elements about the face of the car is about 5 mm all right so this is how you can give a differential uh, sizing so what this basically does is that it will um, give us a good boundary layer study uh, around the car and this will help us to estimate the drag and lift values pretty accurately okay so now what we are going to do is that uh, we are also going to make sure that uh, the uh, we are going to create a prism layer which is also called as inflation layer with an answers around the car body 
So what this prism layer is in simple words, this is nothing but a uh, region of uh, structured mesh around the car for a very small thickness, essentially the boundary layer, where we are going to create a structured mesh. Uh, this will help in capturing the boundary layer with greater levels of accuracy. Okay, So this will help us to capture the uh, uh, viscous layers, viscous sub layers also to some extent. So it will help us to estimate the drag and lift values with greater levels of accuracy. Fine. So what we are going to do is that we are going to now create an um, inflation layer. So I am going to right click here on mesh, go to insert and say inflation. And uh, first it will ask us to select which phase it is. Okay. So in geometry, um, so make sure you go back to single selection filter, single, um, single selection mode, I am sorry and select the body selection filter select this body which is the outer body and now it is asking you for the boundary so within the boundary we will be selecting the faces so select the face selection filter and go back to select mode and click on box select and just like what we did for the face sizing just draw a box around the image body and click apply so what we are trying to say is that we are going to have an inflation layer around um, the faces which is within this box that is which uh, which is basically the uh, image body okay so change the inflation option to first layer thickness and uh, the first layer height in this particular case I am going to give it as 7 e power minus 3 millimeters okay. and um, the maximum layers is going to be 20 and hit generate. So Now what this is going to do is that it is going to create a nice inflation layer around uh, the image body and uh, this is going to be a very thin layer which falls within the boundary layer. And this is going to have structured mesh. Okay. For about 20 elements, we are going to have a structured mesh, and on top of it, everything else is going to remain unstructured. So let us see how that is going to uh, look like now. The meshing is done, and if I hit mesh, and uh, if I just say single select, and if I just zoom in here, see this nice. This looks like a very good inflation layer. So the inflation layer is basically growing, right? So this is the um, structured elements when you zoom out the structured elements last for about um, 7 e power minus 3 into 20 let's say or slightly more uh, millimeters in length and on top of it you are having uh, unstructured elements okay? this kind of a treatment will give us a good uh, way to capture the boundary layer and um, this will also uh, in most of, in, in if you can just zoom in here you can see that uh, the legs will also have a nice inflation layer okay many of them might have some issues with uh, meshing the leg and that's the reason why some researchers don't go for um, the legs you can still do it without the legs but i would always recommend you to use these settings which in my case is actually working pretty well all right so it's now time for us to define the name selections because we have to define uh, what which job, which domain is going to act as what in this particular case so in most of the external aerodynamics problems, we need to have a inlet and an outlet. So if you can see here, I'm going to uh, select the face selection filter, select this face here, right click and go to create name selection and call this as inlet. Okay. So the fluid is going to enter from this face and it's going to go out this way. So this is going to be our outlet. Okay. And um, at the bottom, we are going to have a, a wall. So this is going to be a wall and um, it is going to have the name, I am going to call it as road. Okay. And uh, this is going to be the symmetry phase because this is where we cut our model um, about and I am going to call this symmetry. So this phase here is the top and I am going to also define it as a symmetric wall. So it is going to be symmetry top. The reason why we are going to give it as symmetry is because we don't want it to work as a wall in which case we'll be having a non, uh, no slip condition and this will be creating a lot of trouble because the geometry is not too tall if you want to define it as a wall this height has to be about 10 car lengths uh, so but i'm not doing it that way because uh, that will really increase the mesh count terribly and i don't want to do that uh, and i've uh, done this uh, pretty many times uh, earlier on and uh, we have ensured that uh, the values are almost close when you say it is symmetric and uh, if you are going to define it as wall. So defining it as uh, symmetric really helps us to uh, you know, make the domain much smaller 
and at the same time get accurate results. So this one wall is remaining, so I'm going to call it as a symmetry side wall, maybe side. And um, so the last thing that we need to do is that we have to name the car body. So once again, go to box selection, make sure that it is face select and just draw a box around. It has to have 11 faces. So right click and go to create name selections and call this as car body. Call it as car body. Fine. So if you see here in uh, the name selection, all these name selections are here. So you have the inlet, the outlet, the road, the side wall symmetry, the top symmetry, the side symmetry and also the car body. Okay. So let us just check how many elements we have got. So if you go to mesh, so we have about uh, 1.2 million elements which is quite good and um, we have used 3 degrees of refinement. One is at the outer domain, one is around the body of influence, then there is another one around the uh, faces to have more nodes where we can create the inflation layer and uh, towards the end we have also added the uh, inflation layer. That's pretty much about what you need to do with um, the ANSYS meshing part. So we have created the geometry, we have meshed it and we have also given the name selections and we have defined like what um, is the nature of each of the faces that you can see in this domain. And uh, this is all about uh, the pre-processing and in the next video tutorial we will be going on to ANSYS Fluent and uh, we will be setting up the boundary conditions and uh, solving it for a few iterations. Okay? So that's the end of the lecture and thanks for watching the video.